Well, tonight, the interim police chief in Fort Smith says he's disturbed by a 911 call involving a flash flood victim, and now he's investigating. Now, the entire 911 call made by victim Deborah Stevens was released by police today. Out of respect for the family, 4029 will only broadcast some parts of the call that relate to this investigation. But still, we want to warn you, this call is hard to hear. Tonight, we have 42 against Brett Rains joining us live in Fort Smith with this story. Brett. Well, this is where Debbie Stevens drowned inside her car. Now take a look here. You can see where a temporary memorial has been set up to honor her. And today we learned that the dispatcher who took that call submitted her resignation two weeks before last Saturday when she took that 911 call. We also know it was the dispatcher's last day on the job. Die. You're not going to die. Hold on for a minute. Well, I need to, I'm, I'm scared. I'm sorry. I'm I understand sorry. that you're scared, but there's nothing I can do sitting in a chair, so you're going to have to hold on, and I'm going to send you somebody, okay? That's Debbie Stevens begging for help. She was on the phone with 911 for about 24 minutes. She tells the dispatcher water is filling up her car. You're not going to die. I don't know why you're freaking out. It's okay. I know the water level is I'm high. Scared. I understand that, but you're freaking out doing yeah. nothing but losing your oxygen up in there, so calm down. When are they going to here. As soon as they get there. Police and firefighters arrived about 12 minutes after the initial call, but it took rescue crews more than an hour to reach Stevens. This police body camera video shows just how flooded the area was. I'm scared. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. Well, this, will, te this will teach you next time don't drive in the water. Couldn't see it, ma'am. I'm sorry. Or I wouldn't. Have. I don't see how you didn't see it. You had to go right over it. So I completely understand the. Uh, disgust and the concern uh, that we all have. I understand that listening to a, a person going through the panic that Miss Stevens was in those final moments of her life, and we would all hope that we would get uh, a little bit better response than perhaps what she was given. I don't want us interacting with anybody in that way, whether it's a life and death situation or not. The interim police chief says that dispatcher turned in her two weeks notice and this call came in on her last shift. The interim chief says he doesn't know why the Stevens 911 call was not given top priority. I don't think the dispatcher realized or understood um, the severity of the situation. The interim chief says right now they're investigating to see if police policies were followed and how they can be improved. He says regardless, the dispatcher most likely would not have been fired. I can absolutely know criminal. Um, we've looked at that and there's she, she did nothing criminally wrong. I'm not even going to go so far as to she violated policy. And right now we're not releasing the name of that dispatcher. The interim police chief says she worked for the department for five years and was in charge of training new dispatchers. She was also named fire dispatcher of the year this year. Now I've reached out to her for comment. Of course, I'll let you know if she calls me back and we'll have more coming up tonight at six. Live in Fort Smith, Brett Rains, 4029 News. And a memorial fund has been set up through Eastside Baptist Church in Fort Smith. The Stevens family pastor tells us that funeral arrangements are not finalized yet. Debbie and her mother both worked in the children's ministry at the church.